My name is Jan Egeland. I was for many years involved in uh, peace work and humanitarian assistance for the United Nations, for the government of Norway, and for the Red Cross system. I wanted to pose two questions in this uh, introduction to the aid debate. One is, are we making progress on our watch as humanity globally? And the second one is, is aid helping in making progress? We are seven billion people on the planet now. Uh, on this image, you see a lot of red means a lot of people. One billion more people have come to the planet every 13 years since 1960. And there will be between 9 and 10 a billion when I uh, pack my fan final bag uh, around uh, 2040, 2045. In my lifetime, we will go from 3 to more than 9 billion people. It has never happened before in human history. It will never happen again that the world population has tripled. So it is, I, I think we should be a little bit optimistic uh, when we see certain important facts. The last 20 years, life expectancy has grown on all continents and in nearly all countries. Child mortality is down considerably on all continents and in nearly all countries. Purchasing power on average is up in nearly all countries. Of the 135 countries surveyed by the UN in the most recent Human Development Report launched in last November, 132 of 135 countries had had progress, most of them considerable progress compared to 1970s in terms of life expectancy, health, education, and purchasing power. But there are many problems. Perhaps the biggest is the following. There has never been a greater distance between the richest and the poorest countries, between the richest and the poorest people. A country like Norway is now a hundred times richer than the poorest countries. You go back to the time of our great-great-grandparents. The difference between the richest and the poorest countries was one to three. Five individuals are now richer than the poorest two billion people. Now, two things are particularly important to re regard in terms of humanitarian aid and assistance. One is war and the other one is natural disasters. If you talk, look at war, well, we've made progress over the last 20 years. Considerable progress between 40 and 50 conflicts when the Cold War had just ended, 1993. Today, between 30 and 40. Uh, there is, however, a worrying tendency. Terror and war on terror has not been a good period. We are again seeing more conflicts of late. However, if we consider battle deaths, how many people die in conflict? It's been going down. The likelihood for somebody dying from political violence or war has probably never been lower than it is at our time and age. It goes down in each conflict. Uh, uh, so each conflict is now less lethal in terms of uh, casualties, and there are fewer conflicts on average. Not so for natural disasters. Look at the tripling of natural disasters in this decade compared to the 1960s and 70s. It is the greatest challenge on our watch that climate variability and change is making the weather much more extreme. So more people live more exposed to more extreme weather. Therefore, it's good that there is more effective 
relief. Well, we saw that in this famous Indian Ocean tsunami. I was the global emergency relief coordinator at the time. We woke up on the second day of the Western Christmas, and five million people were affected. One to two million people were, were in need of, desperately in need of emergency relief. When we took stock a year later, we had no accounts that people died anywhere because, uh, uh, massively because of lack of emergency relief. 227,000 people died in the first minutes of the tsunami. Very few lives were lost in the following months because everybody virtually got emergency relief through the many organizations that were coordinated by the United Nations and the Red Cross system. Now, the number of people dying in this increased number of natural disasters has gone down. Look at Africa. Yes, it's costing more, if you look at the last three decades than before, in terms of livelihoods, but lives are saved. And one reason is more effective relief. Just like the number of people dying in conflict is dramatically down because relief is more effective. These, these, are, these, these are the facts. Now, there are many dilemmas. Look at Darfur. Well, there was a prediction in 2004 from many quarters that hundreds of thousands of people would die because there was an ethnic cleansing campaign which was horrendous. Hundreds of thousands of people were driven out of their homes and there was no access for humanitarians at the time. We got access, and mortality went down dramatically. However, these people who got the assistance, this is from an image from the first <laughs> helicopter where we, where we came in to one of these groups in 2004. They are in, these people are in the same miserable camps still today. They have no lack of food, they get primary health care for the first time, this, these tribes people. They have education for the first time. So we keep them alive, but we don't give them a life because there is no political solution and there is no security solution to it. In northern Uganda, where the Lord's Resistance Army terror ruled for a long time, and where the government of Uganda did little to help, we started an international effort both to try to get a cessation of hostilities through South Sudan and to get humanitarian assistance in. These young child soldiers are now in other parts of Africa. They are much fewer but the Lord's Resistance Army is still there. When I came there on my first visit in um, September of 2003, I remember vividly that a, a, a girl uh, was born because from an LRA um, uh, escapee, a girl, a sex slave in the LRA. She had escaped and, and gave birth to her, her child. I kept contact with the, with the child, and I got this image of her uh, three months ago. The girl had, because there was international assistance, remarried. Uh, the, the mother remarried, and the little girl that was born when I was there is now the prou proud owner of this cow, uh, and the family has several others. In northern Uganda, people have returned from the camps and they're now, uh, now again cultivating the land of northern Uganda. And it would not have happened if there was not external assistance. But I do agree, in most cases, aid is the least needed, fair trade, justice, good governance, investment is the number one thing but do not, and here I agree with Philip very much, 
we must be able to foot the bill of at least uh, giving uh, aid to those who have no alternatives to the receiving from the ger generosity of those who have the resources to give. Look forward to the debate. Thank you.